My dad's a cheapskate. He bought a remote from the pound shop. Hello. This video is an updated version of one I had released back in September 2018. It covers the SignalX branded remote controls sound, uh, sold in the UK uh, by the Poundland shops. I mentioned back then that a number of these remote controls uh, are missing the code list um, in the packaging as sold on the sh in the shops. At the time I said this would have made the device very difficult to use and set up. However since then I've scanned in a full code list and have that uh, in uh, a link in the description below. Better still though, I'd sent an email to Poundland Customer Services informing them of this problem and asking if they might have a code list which they could send me that might be clearer than my scanned one. I was very impressed when, next day, I had a PDF file of the complete list. Even better, you can search for brand names within it. So well done to Poundland. You couldn't ask for better customer service than that. So the link for this version is also in the description below. And you'll see that it's been watermarked Hugh Dunn Demo, but it's unclear to me if that refers to the original manufacturer or is related in some way to the creation of the PDF document itself. The instructions, however, to this remote are not particularly clear, so let's demonstrate how to set up and use some of the features of this remote control. In Blue Peter style, here is one I opened earlier. I've already added a couple of AAA batteries to this, but one thing I think is particularly difficult is taking the batteries out again. If you want to take the batteries out, you really can barely do so with your fingers. The only way that seems effective is a sharp tap or two to bash the batteries out. Not ideal, is it? But let's live with that. Be warned, of course, that it may forget the codes you've entered when you change the batteries. We'll experiment with that later. Now, there's this piece of sticky tape. That's interesting. <clears throat> that seems to be covering up some instructions. It says, simpler models setting. Hold the set key and the power key until the light is on. Now I think that, oh look, it says, put in the three digit code. Now that's wrong because the codes are four digits long. So that's completely wrong. That's why they've put sticky tape over the top of it. There's a CE mark, which is almost certainly the fake CE mark. That means Chinese export is not proper European safety uh, marking. But in reality, a remote control is not particularly likely to cause a fire or otherwise kill somebody, though it's not impossible for them to catch fire, has to be said. Now we have the instructions, both of these had staples in them. So there's the instructions. There's lots of mistakes in this, so I'll make sure that we cover this um, later to try to show how some of the functions actually work. And here's the code list. Huh. Now the code list is printed in several fonts in different places. All the fonts are ridiculously small. You will struggle to read this even with your best reading glasses on. You'll need a magnifying glass. Um, and it's a bit chaotically laid out as well. So you'll find, for example, a brand name appears in several places across here. Um, it's not clear what um, appliance type is in which group. So you may end up having to go through the sheet in some detail. As the instructions say, this remote has four methods to configure. Number one, code programming. So what this means is, if you know the code number from this huge sheet for your particular appliance, or you want to try several of them, then you can just put in the number into the remote control to see if it works. So in this particular case, I want to operate a Panasonic video recorder, and along the Panasonic list on my big magnifying here is 0402. So we're going to try that. The instructions are a little vague about exactly what you do, but I'll tell you. You press and hold the button, in this case VCR appliance, until the light comes on. Then you type in 0402, and provided the light goes out, it worked. You can then go point this at your nearest Panasonic video recorder and check that it works. In this case, it's going to bleep if it switches on.
Excellent. That doesn't necessarily mean you have the codes perfect, it means you're close. It might be, for example, that not all the buttons do what they should do, and another code number might work better. Now here's an interesting line, which may not be very clear, so I'll explain it to you. Any codes could be input and under any device. And what that means is, I press the, zero, the, the, the VCR button and then enter 0402, and that works a video recorder. But if I pressed the sky button, and enter 0402. It will still work, the Panasonic video recorder. So the codes are not unique to the button that you program them in on. The codes are unique to the devices that they work, but you can put anything in any place. That's um, helpful in so far as if you've tried to program, say, um, a laser disc player with a DVD button, there's no point trying the same code on, say, um, Hi-Fi button to see if that works, or AUX. If it doesn't work under DVD, it won't work under any. We're going to try to program a video recorder for operation with this remote control without knowing which code number is appropriate for this machine so we don't have to necessarily find the right one in that huge code list. We're going to do it using the second uh, option in the instruction sheet which is to search by brand name. Now it says switch on the device you want to control in this case it's a Philips VR1000 Super VHS video recorder. This is built by JVC but it uses Philips remote control codes. I have a remote control already an old one that does work this video recorder but it doesn't have uh, any menu button on it so I can't for example exit this setup screen using a menu button because none of these remote control buttons work menu. The main features work but not that. So I'm hoping very much that I can find a menu button for this Philips video recorder on here. Now the way you use this as per the instructions is you hold down the button for the type of machine it is, in this case VCR, and simultaneously press a number. Now in this case, according to the instruction sheet, rather than the great big list of code numbers, the instruction sheet says I need to press number 7 for a Philips machine. It also says then you should hold down those two buttons while it searches codes. Well, it could take a long time. It could even take quite a long time to search through all the codes. So it does also say you can let go of one of the two keys and it will carry on. So I'm going to press VCR and number 7 and then when it starts searching, when the light comes on, I'm going to let go of number 7, keep the VCR button pressed, pointing at the video recorder, waiting for it to switch off. That will mean we have a, fa a valid Philips video recorder code. Let's give it a whirl. VCR 7, wait for the light to come on and stay on. pointing it at the machine, holding down just one button. Oh, it's switched off already. Good, so we've found a valid Philips code. That didn't take long. I'll tell you now, some of them take a very long time. Switch it on. Oh, I can't seem to switch it on. So it seems that I may have some valid codes here. I was able to switch it off. Hmm not very successful. Okay, well let's carry on. One of the instruction, useful things in the instructions it says, if you carry on from where you've left off, you press VCR and 7 again in this case, it will carry on searching from where it was, provided you don't change brand name, you keep looking in this case into Philips, it'll try another code for Philips, so VCR 7, light comes on, Keep holding the button. Oh, I think it's just gone off again. OK, good. Let's try that. Can I switch it back on? Aha, this is looking more promising. Can I press play? Good. I can stop. What about menu? This is what I really need. So which is the menu button? That one, I think. Oh, it's changing inputs. 
That's not what I was expecting. That's not menu. I can't call up the menu. So though I can do some things, I can't really do what I want. Oh, it looks like I've got slow motion. I've got slow motion on one of the buttons, but that's not what I'm looking for. So carry on. VCR and seven until the light comes on. Keep pointing it at the machine, wait for it to switch off and see if we have a better code set. It's switched off. OK, let me try the menu button. Ah, wonderful. I have the menu button. That's the one I've been missing for all this time. How about uh, the deck functions? Can I stop and play? Yes. Good. Problem solved then. Navigate through the menu. Excellent. And in this case, one of the things I really wanted to do was switch off the digital 3R feature of this machine. These JVC machines have this strange um, 3D noise reduction which makes the pictures look a bit ghostly so I like to switch that off. Excellent. Press the menu button again. Get out the menu. Good. In a moment I'll show you how you can read back the code number that's been learned on this remote control having worked through the list for that particular brand name. We're going to demonstrate one of the features, which is the code display function. This is useful if you've forgotten what number you put in against a particular appliance, or if it searched it so you never knew what it was and it's found a particular code on its own. Now, the example I give you is for a Philips TV with a code number 0513. So, I've programmed this to have exactly that number on the TV, and we'll show how you can read back that that is a number applied for the TV um, appliance. One of the things to remember is that zeros appear as 10 flashes on this LED, but all the others are the number you'd expect. So the way you do this is to press the appliance and OK for two seconds. The light will then start flashing and you need to start counting them. Here goes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's a zero. One, two, three, four, five. One. One, two, three. So exactly as their description, that TV is 0513. So that's a fairly easy to use function that actually does do pretty much what it says in the instructions. At the end of the instruction manual here, there's an item about volume penetrate through function. Now I normally call this uh, a volume punch through and what it allows you to do is control the TV volume even when you're selected on VCR. So here I am operating this video recorder, I can pause it and operate that and on the TV button I've got the ability to control the TV, it's a sharp TV and in this case I'm altering the volume. Notice that the minus and plus buttons are not the way around you'd expect them to be so that's a little confusing, but fine, it works. Now, the idea of the volume punch through feature is that when you're on VCR in this case, or satellite or something else, you can still work your TV remote control at volume. It wouldn't work, say, with an amplifier, but it would work just with a plain TV. So here we are, I've just pressed VCR. I can control the VCR. Can I control the volume on the TV with plus and minus? Uh, no. For some reason, volume punch through is not working. It says here, inputting 9908, the feature can be switched on and off. It's not clear exactly what you should do in terms of typing that in. If you just type in 9908 when you're on the VCR or TV button, you're just sending those commands out to your VCR or TV. No help at all. Doesn't solve the problem. So I tried a few other experiments like pressing set 9908 
or holding the set button down and 9908, that doesn't do anything, or programming the item itself here by holding the button down, say TV, wait for the light to come on, 9908, no, well, that operates the TV, but I still can't do it when I'm in VCR mode. VCR, no. So it's clear as mud. 9908. What are you supposed to do to get that to work when it's in VCR mode? So get the volume punch through to work. I remain defeated on that. It's a remote. Good. That's it. So far we've looked at the first two ways of entering codes into this remote control. One is to look through this huge sheet, try to find some numbers that match the brand of the equipment you're using, enter them into here and see if they work. But with such an enormous list of codes it's a hideous process. So the second way, which may appear to be more hopeful, is to use this table. But there are limitations here too. You may not know the brand name of the equipment you're using, for example if it's been rebadged, or the equipment may not appear here. Or, as I've discovered, it may appear here and still not work, and that was a big problem I had. I was trying to use a Sony Betamax video recorder with this remote control. Those codes should be very easy. All old universal remote controls carry the Sony Betamax codes. VCR Sony and Kenwood uh, are grouped together there as index number one. So I did VCR1 and went through the codes. And it never operated the uh, Sony Betamax video recorders. But it did operate a Sanyo Betamax video recorder and a Panasonic Super VHS one when it was stepping through the codes. Now I know that Sony never shared remote control codes with Panasonic or Sanyo. So, nor did Kenwood. So, there's an error there. That is not that does not hold the correct list of video recorder uh, remote control codes for Sony video recorders. So, we may have to try a different route. There is a third and fourth way of programming this remote control but they are essentially the same. The difference being that on the third one here, which is manual searching code, you have to press the channel up or down to step through the different codes. And auto code searching, it does it itself, albeit slower. The failure here being, it steps through hundreds and hundreds of codes, say for a TV, all the different TV codes spaced at two seconds apart or half a second apart, depending which route you're choosing. The odds are that if it ever operates your equipment, you'll miss it. Now, if it, you miss it by a little bit, actually it's not too bad because there is a way, if you read the instructions, you can change the direction of the search. So you can press the channel down and it will start searching back again. So if you've missed your code, but you know it happened in the last few minutes, you may be able to find it. But in practice, Searching through these hundreds of codes takes hours. In fact, so many hours, I've never even managed to get to the end of it. I reckon it's got to be over three hours. It's just not practical. So I'm not even going to go through this process with you in too much detail because it doesn't really work. But let's have a quick look at auto code searching. For example, if we wanted to program a TV, what you do is press and hold the TV button for three seconds as though you're about to enter a code number from the list but then press power and it just goes ahead sending out codes every two seconds and you wait for your TV to switch off well could be in for a long wait and with the manual search, you do a similar thing, but you um, press the channel up and down each time. So let's try it. 
press and hold TV for three seconds and then press and release channel up or down and every time you press it it will send out a code if you keep the button down it'll send them out every half second so that's quicker than the other route but you have to keep your finger on the button no it's just not practical and there really lies the end of the machine the unit you either have this extremely difficult code list or the flawed brand name uh, table which works some of the time or you try the manual or auto code searching which takes many many hours finally at the end of the instructions is what they call a key definition table this is supposed to give you some idea of what button to press here to access a particular button that would have been on the original remote control obviously a lot of them are obvious like one two three four but some are less obvious for example if you wanted to press uh, a button to do an exit or an escape you would press a button on this remote control labeled exit there isn't a button on this remote control labeled exit so we have another failure here it's trying to suggest that you press certain buttons on here to get certain subjects for your for example satellite receiver but the button it's referring to doesn't even exist on this remote control. So I'm afraid this key, de key definition table is of no help at all. It's got some hilarious mistakes in it though. I think they're trying to say hi-fi when the instructions at the top say fifi, as in fifi and the flower tots. The instructions also refer to things that we don't really understand possibly. TNT I believe is a French satellite um, or cable network um, there's also mention in instructions of TV and RTV and what the difference is between a TV and an RTV is unknown. So lots of mistakes in this instruction book. You have to ask yourself whether the uni unit is actually usable at all. I've found especially with VCR okay not many people use VCRs anymore but especially with VCR I found some of the codes are simply missing I wasn't able to operate the Sony Betamax and I also wasn't able to operate a Grundig V2000 video recorder or I couldn't find the codes for it if you just want to operate a TV it's okay and it's probably okay for some satellite and other um, easy subjects when it comes to more complicated ones like tape decks you're going to have an awful job finding the right codes to operate a, any type of tape deck that has remote control. Something to note here, some of the legends here are underneath the keys. So menu is this button, which looks like it's a sleep button, but it's not. It's very limited. It's only a pound. You could buy one in case it comes in useful. Yeah, that seemed to work. Finally, it's worth doing yourself a little note, a sticker of some sort, so that you can write down the code numbers that you've found work on your equipment, so that you don't have to search through them again if ever you uh, lose the code numbers. But the good news is that if you take the batteries out, at least I've done this for several minutes, uh, because you have to change them, you'll find that it does retain the code. So there's a good bit of uh, technology they must have burned it into non-volatile RAM in there. So finally can I ask you to subscribe and to like and to share and I'll do more videos on uh, audio and video equipment and technology in the near future. Bye for now.